Thomas of the Speak of Box. 92.7. Money yeah, we're ready, we're ready. Ready, ready. ready. Yeah, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Culture Fusion. Our special guest today is recording artist, radio personality, and Mr. Great is the art form, Jaiga. Welcome to what the up, show. What up, what up, what up? What's good, what's good? Want to say I'm blessed. Good afternoon to all your listeners. Shouts to everybody in the studio. We say much love, and as we say, great is the art form. It will always prevail. Yes, it will. <laughs> <laughs> How did you enjoy Miami Carnival, by the way? I know you performed a show. Um, it was good, it was good. Um, I've been on the circuit for, for, for a little bit. I've been out since July. Um, contrary to popular demand, a lot of people think that I personally came out. But, you know, I live for the art form. But this trip really and truly was mixed. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily um, only about that. I recorded a lot because I'm on this mission to do 22 songs by 2022. So oh, wow. that's one of the missions. I also had to finish um, school. So I just had to wrap that up. So I'm now officially certified in ESI in emotional and social intelligence, which I'm very proud of. So that's kind of one of the things I was doing as well. So that's accomplished. And now I'm looking forward to stepping into 2022. That's nice. So tell us how you got into music. Um, well, it was like, boy, this is something that's uh, from a young age, when I, in my teenage years, I used to DJ. Um, was part of a crew that was very very popular back in the late 90s mm -hmm. called radioactive mm -hmm. myself hoppy lord hype john boy most of them everybody part of that crew still do a lot of great work now and that was the original thing and on the age of around 19 mm -hmm. i was approached by iowa because my energy was a little different in terms of what i liked and he allotted me the opportunity to travel and i toured with george i was george road dj one of the first djs to do soca for 13 years and in that journey is when i tell everybody i was baptized in soca back in 1998 that is when because before we used to just play dance hall you know the things yeah. to go in trinidad radioactive was known as a dance hall sound mm -hmm. so when i had the opportunity to start travel and um really appreciate what soca music was doing outside of trinidad is when i really fell in love with it mm -hmm. and that's where the journey started and it was inevitable it was like a, i was a young guy interested in music and this was trying to find my way. Like I always tell people, the two most important days of any human's being in life is the day he was born and the day he found out what he was born to do. So in the early late 90s, early 2000s is when I um, really figured out what my mission was with respect to the music. Nice. Now you're formerly known as Super Jigger TC. What prompted the name change? Um, kids. Kids. <laughs> <laughs> kids, yeah, because um, Super Jigger TC was a name that I really got from TC is my initials of my real name. Mm -hmm. That's what everybody called me, parents, grandparents, siblings. I was TC across the board. Mm -hmm. And the super jigger came when I started to travel. Mm -hmm. I would come back home like 
you know, when you go on tour and when I go out with Ivo back then and I come up, you know, back then as a young black person, I don't want to sound ignorant, the city writes a passage for a young black dude is to wear Jordans and yeah. you know, and we are snap back. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I propelled, you know, I perpetuated that energy. And so when I got home, everybody said, they say, you act like a super N-word. But okay, be, okay. Yeah, so N-word can be used on the radio. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's where the, the, the Jager came. And ironically, back then, Jager, that Jay-Z song came okay. out. So it right. all kind of meshed. So that's where the super Jager came. Yeah, your swag. And, that was like, but, huh? Your swag. That's, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where that kind of um, elevate, um, originated from. And fast forward to the name change. Um, with Super Jigger, I started different journeys. I created a show with Peter C called Suka Star, which ran for eight years and was very successful. Mm -hmm. um, I'm living that legacy now. You see the likes of Pretty um, Voice, Second Star, Ufa, yeah. and all these new budding stars is people I discovered when I was doing that show. Mm -hmm. So inside of that, that lived, that lived and stayed the course. And when I had my first daughter, she was part of that journey in the, in the like season four or five is when she came. And I had this thing where I didn't want to be that guy going in the 4A, like to go pick up, pick up your kids in school. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you can't differentiate whether that is the grandfather or the father. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so I had a phobia with that noise. Like, well, next thing you know, when I go to pick up my daughter, people say, I wonder if that's your grandfather. Boy. So that started, started playing my mind a little bit. Yeah. So I said, listen, I need to just try and find a way mm -hmm. to give my persona uh -huh. some more legs. And ironically, my friend's dad, who owns Tang Song Company, that is, he could have never say Super Jigger. He always used to go, Super Jaga boy, Jaga boy. And then he said, he, I really, that on one day on radio, myself and Shal, he just say, I say, boy, fed up for this thing. He could never get it right. So he, they started saying the Jaga. And I just, I went and I researched, I Googled it, and it was never coming up. So I just went out and said, call me Jaga. When people ask what he mean, and I said, it means love. It means and love. I just went with it. You understand? Yeah. And in 2014, when I was doing the name change, when I was and, and that was a year that really changed my life in 2014 when I was planning that I was doing an EP, rolling out the EP. Um, I was expecting my second daughter. Uh, she came prematurely. It was a really hard year for me. She came prematurely. My dad lost his legs. It was, yeah, it was a whole so meltdown, yeah. you understand? And that is when the Jiger thing came. And I struggled to make it work put a lot of work behind it because musically I didn't get what I was looking for because I had to scrap the EP because of personal reasons and, and, and a host of other things and, and then inside of that two years 2014 or 2016 is when I had a went I went on a personal journey I suffered depression I flew to London I abandoned my family I do all those crazy things and that's when I started therapy back in 2016 and and, and then is when I kind of worked harder on me mm -hmm. the brand and not so much forcing the music because I came into the business in a different energy. When my first song, it was never for me. I wrote what I want for Fireball. I worked um, um, Wang 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 for Iowa. I wrote a lot of songs before yeah, I even sing a song. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So that's the thing. My energy was always there. I was always working with producers. I was lucky to work with some of the greats. Um, Rest their soul now with Daryl Braxton, um, Shell Shock. Those were the producers I used to hang out with back in those days because they were also DJs. So coming yeah. from a DJ world, and then Peter Coppin out of Barbados, who they know as Monster Peace now. So a lot of the producers back then were DJs that I came up with. Yeah. So that is how so I started to push the name Jiger and started to shift my focus a little bit in terms of how I wanted to sell it and what I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And I saw it, it coming to fruition when my daughter started to get a little older and her friends would call me Uncle Jiger. Uncle Jiger. So that's when I realized it stuck. So it was a good, it was, it was hard at the beginning. A lot of people questioned it because Super Jigger TC was doing quite well. I was yeah. a household name in Trinidad, um, had successful television shows. Remember, I signed to Stark for many of years. I just re-signed again. So, you know, I had a lot of good things going on. So yeah. nobody couldn't understand why the name changed. But for me, I felt it had to happen in order to give my energy a some more life, not to give the persona yeah. a little more legs. Gotcha. Now, you're also a radio personality, and you use your platform to particularly highlight the soca genre. Tell us how you got into radio. That too wasn't, that too was just, um, by, it was a coincidence. I was actually, I love this story. I was sitting outside of 96. Mm -hmm. They had cricket in the oval. Mm -hmm. So that used to be a liming spot for a lot of people. So back yeah. then it was Maxi Miller's song was very popular, Excalibur Radioactive. We were just hanging outside the station. Yeah. And nobody was on air. 
because everybody was in they used to have this bar next door to the radio station called Cricket Wicked everybody was drinking rum who drunk them times West Indies used to have one day the long cricket version not like T20 you now yeah. it was long yeah. so everybody just be liming and drinking mm-hmm. and the owner of the station at the time um, Tony well Chinese laundry yeah. so yeah. tell person be like yo TC what is he seeing he say boy nobody in here boy you want to go on the radio <laughs> just like, I was like what it was just so like what do you mean boy go on here and them times you're green all yeah, you know yeah. is to push mic and say nonsense nothing yeah. articulate was coming out of your mouth just noise yeah, so yeah. music you just ball like, hey! okay. ah! I've, no I've seen your radio it's quite funny your facial expressions are hilarious yeah, so okay. no so back then you just but you, you because one of the things at radio and, and I wasn't officially trained back then yeah. because I did broadcasting after I was already on air yeah. so I encourage all the younger people who are doing it as much as you might have talent just to go on air you also have to learn the basics because it's pretty important there's simple things that you just need to understand yeah. right back then you don't know if if <coughs> excuse if somebody died that day mm-hmm. i didn't know the definition or the difference between reading with color i might have read a death announcement if the prime minister died that day i would say oh you god the prime minister <laughs> died that day. and it would have been a poor yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but um <laughs> luckily for me the energy at the time and because radioactive was that popular as young fellas on the ground because we were really popular because the nightclub scene was a thing back then mm-hmm. you had coconuts you had bass you had um celebs all of these things were really really popular in trinidad back in those in the early 2000s mm-hmm. so we were real popular so that popularity helped the fact that when people started listening yo them is the fellas who's being the parties every weekend yeah. so the name started to ring out so it was easy it was an easy transition yeah. and then when i started to travel a lot with george it phased out and i was off of radio for a very long time and then I guess it's something that I can do on an off day yeah. and, and I enjoy it. No, you're and natural. Yeah, natural. Yeah, and, and now for me, as you said, the platform now is different because I felt as though I was one of the people responsible for working so hard mm-hmm. to bring the genre to a place of um, where I could bring the genre to a place where in my early DJ days, mm-hmm. nobody played soca outside of carnival, mm-hmm. not even any dance. Yeah. You could go to the clubs and you're not going to hear it at all, at all, at all. It's hip-hop dance or strictly. Yeah. And I fought for many, many years. And I live comfortably now seeing that all the work that went in. No, you can't go out dancing in here, Suka. If you go on a boat right now and a DJ and play Suka, you still just stone him. Yeah, yeah. It, just <laughs> yeah. it just doesn't happen. A DJ cannot. There's no yeah. DJ on the planet could go in no dance worldwide I'm talking about. Yeah. Internationally as well. And I've been fortunate to get to see it up close because i was in it i remember i went to a cultural exchange the first time i went to the far east i went to thailand in a cultural exchange representing a non-profit and i had the opportunity to perform in front of ninety-five thousand people that's when shy shy check shy shy check had left and the, the regime and they were, they were getting into a democratic state so they needed people from democratic countries to come up and they invited me to come and i remember i played seven songs for ninety-five thousand chinese well asian people and they jump and wave and no not not going on but i only played soca and yeah. from then that really opened my eye, a bell ring and from then to now as much as i respect all genres and i will hang out with a dance all artist everybody i know my lane yeah like even on air when you listen to me on air i speak only over soca yeah you understand yeah. If, if other genres are playing i give respect and the road you might take care of it or nikki or road but when it comes to soca that's what i deal yeah, with so yeah, i do. try to keep my thing niche because i believe if you keep it niche and people respect you more and you, you, you kind of know i in my lane you know what i'm yeah. saying like no disrespect to nobody else so yeah. if you see me in a dance or a show i've been to many concerts been all over the world and you will see like a busy signal will heal me and they will say hey look big up my boy jaga great is the art form yeah, you yeah. get that respect one time so yeah. that's why i look at it and i know shame of that like i tell everybody i am i will wave the biggest pom-pom for suka i'm the biggest cheerleader because yeah. i love the art it's not about me i care about it i don't really i care about the art I don't care about I put the art before anything else. I have some people like that. My disappointment with like DJs, they're DJs who care about getting played or care about getting up forward. They don't really care about the music. Yeah. So I yeah. care about the art first, right? Yes. Now, you're the founder of the Bass Media Group. Could you tell us a bit more about that? All right. Well, that's a company with that's myself and my business partner, my homeboy Lee. Um, that's Lee Designs. He is responsible for many, many years. A lot of things that you would have seen happening, like everything graphic wise, visuals. Mm-hmm like Marshall Montana for over the past 10 years Bungie most of the mainstream artists and like we eat a lot of DJs might be familiar DJ might, might they might be familiar there's a blast that go out that most DJs get it's a lead designs blast we we've been doing that for years responsible for making sure that everybody get their hands on the music mm-hmm. 
you understand, to make sure that the DJ pool is always lit. We have over 8,500 um, program directors across the world, across the globe that we, we, we supply music to on a daily basis. So that's what we do. That's what basis. And over the past three years, we included um, different shows that I put on the platform. So we try to do things that uh, we upload on the platform. In 2021, for TTT, we kind of produced all TTT's local content. Because again, because yeah. of my television background, which I was self-taught with in the beginning, and over the years, kind of went and had it mainstreamed and, and certified that I can, I can, I am, I wear the hat too also as a television producer. I can do that, so you know. So because of that, I use that expertise there and do that. That's what Base Media is. We are a company that really helps produce or take brands because we take a lot of brands and take them from idea to fruition, like to put it out, and we partner with a lot of other people as well nice now you also do consultant for the prestigious international soccer monarch how did that opportunity come about oh that's true faye that was true faye when faye had the opportunity to um in 2019 when she was approached to be the chairperson um because of our relationship we have a long-standing relationship many many years long before the music yeah. like we always make joke i know face and she's selling leather slippers and <laughs> You understand? Yeah. <laughs> long, long, long time. You dig? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a long, <laughs> long, long, long time. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long time. Up since then, they, those days to now. So when when she had the opportunity, the first person I think she called after B would have been me. She's like, "Yo, Jags, this is on the table. What do you think we should do?" And I was like, "Hell yeah, let's 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 crack at it." And you know, and over the years, I've been quietly behind the scenes with a lot of different people. You know, like um, I deal closely with the Grenadian crew. Everybody who know me know that I have a real love for Grenada. A lot of the top tier Grenada artists and me are personal friends outside of the music but we oh, I also consult on them and the things that they do like the last physical soccer monarch of Grenada which would have been 2019 saw the likes of which have been yeah 2019 saw the likes of um Boise and Vaughn winning oh, and I was yeah. fortunate to be those are the, the two artists that I really helped that year that season like from taking the clothes to them from E-Cliff yeah. and taking it over and it was so funny I remember going through the airport and all the, the customs officers are laughing they're like Jagger is a hypocrite watch it yes you can't make up your mind you're your two you're two side because I defended my two artists won the two the, the groovy and the power oh, okay. but I told them that was going to happen I'd call it from before mm -hmm. like it was, I was so confident in it before these songs even released I told I, I was on an interview and I told a Grenadian station I said listen I'm calling it now Boys is coming back because he didn't win the year before. Mm -hmm. I said, Boys is coming back for strong and Vaughn is going to be crowned the first and the youngest groovy monarch ever. They say, Yeah, right, whatever. And yeah. bam, it happened. Yeah. So yeah. my credibility went through yeah. the roof. And I was like, Yo, this dude just really hit it on here. And I've been successful in doing that and calling it, especially in the smaller islands. Like, I hate to see small island soccer. I don't condone that terminology. Yeah. But I really work closely with a lot of the other islands that do soca music like the, like the ones like the antigua um saint martin dominica saint kitts vi all the artists and them from down in those areas you know that and because the music been growing there and to be quite honest over the past five six years trend has not really created a hit song mm -hmm. we um have artists that sing on hit rhythms mm -hmm. like for instance yeah. backyard yeah. jam mm -hmm. that's bobby does that fit the word farmer and my me and lyrical everybody sing on that is a, that is a red boys family lele -le 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 -le. that's not trend that produce song either the last trend of that produced song that was really a big song would have been Savannah Grass. Mm -hmm. yeah. You understand? So yeah. that's why, so for me, I try to work closely with everybody. Wherever you do soca from, I don't care. Once you're doing soca, me and you is friend. Nice, nice. Now, as you mentioned, you're very passionate about the art form of soca. What is your ultimate goal as a musician? Um, The ultimate goal with the art form is to really try and make it household. And I want to encourage people to love the music and not fet. Our oh, issue in Trinidad and Tobago is that we love party, we don't love the music. Mm -hmm. We like the fetting aspect of carnival, but we really like the art because they're disrespectful to art. It's disrespectful to the music on a whole. You can feel it in other genres across the world. Watch that Afrobeat. Afrobeat is a younger music. It's a soca, but was able to break through. Yes, because the continent is way bigger and there's more listeners and there's more support. But I think if we can make it to the World Cup, if we could have a Miss World and Miss Universe, why soca can be exactly. greater than it is you yeah, understand it's because so. the people who the gatekeepers of soca made mistakes in the earlier years and we have to move away from self a lot of artists 
factory the business with self. Everybody wants a big song. Everybody wants to win Soka Monarch. Everybody wants to be on top. Yeah. But nobody ever stops to think about, you need to put the music first because you will need to appreciate the music. And then when you will appreciate the music and we have more of us, they will then appreciate us. Every You can walk the streets and see a reggae person and identify them. Soka has no identity. Yeah, you see a guy right now come out in a Porsche or a Bentley or a drop top and you have big cool chains on and name on it and and you hear we're the best that yeah, yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> you understand yeah, if you yeah. see some men in a turban yeah. and a box guitar somewhere and you see them and you hear john you see some smoke them is reggae men yeah and john weston is the same thing mm-hmm. which you, you could walk could you walk down in scarborough and identify two soccer artists walking down the street you can't mm-hmm. zero yeah, identity that's, that's so that one of my quests in life is when I say great is the art for me that you can wear it and you can say it with pride yeah. and it's not just about soca you know, it's just about understanding and respecting where you from wherever you are in the region and giving and putting that in front of self so you can stand proud and say listen I say great is the art form and I believe in this and I believe in my country I believe in the art I believe and just walk around with that kind of persona it's about being cocky for your own thing and that's my ultimate goal is that the younger generation coming up will feel happy to say it like i remember me growing up calypso used to feel old yeah so it was an old thing as a youth man when you hear about soca artists and things like super blue and them used to consider them like old men yeah that because that was the mindset so trying to change your mindset to make the younger generation when you hear soca it's a cool thing man look now you've seen it you had the voice and them have it looking cool fun and them have it looking cool second pretty it's about that vibe and that was my energy when i did so because i wanted it to be hip so that's why i do all the, the white pants tight nonsense and all of that if it's in tight it's in right and get your swag but i try to make it hip, yeah, hip and yeah. that has been my mission to try and keep it that way so that more people can come because that is how you encourage young people to be part of it calypso died because the gatekeepers of calypso wanted it for themselves yeah. if a young person wanted to go in the big yard and sing where you come out with that rock for they used to run them yeah. so you had to change that mentality you have to open up the gates and young people if you want to sing let them sing let them come be a part of it and bring different energies different perspectives to the music yeah. today i agree i agree now i'm an athlete and it's a question i ask all my guests on the show what is your favorite sport track and field track and field yeah and i i am not i know it's it's i ain't know you know you normally see fellas into the football the arsenal the, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the manchester and and yeah, yeah. yeah don't ask me about that i don't know nothing <laughs> you don't know nothing you need and i have no shame i know it's nothing about it but i can brag and boast like i tell you like ding dong hates on me all the time because i've been to two manchester and arsenal game oh yeah and sat in the box too Yes, yeah, so I could show off. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. Some people, so I show off. I went to basketball games and had the same privilege. Sat behind Drake in Toronto. Uh, so I was fortunate in that way, but I don't really. Yeah, ding dong, did you really turn on you? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> up to, up to, when a couple of days ago, he went um, Tuesday night, he went to a, a Miami game, mm-hmm. a small game, and yeah, he. Yeah. And he Face, he, he face and he say, watch me. I say, yo, bro, when you're in a full stadium and Drake in front of you, then talk to me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, but on a real i'm not yeah. in, but i like track and field for one the discipline that comes with it yeah um it's something that i ne- i always tell myself that one day i would do like a uh like a professional non-professional kind of i want to train very hard for it one day mm-hmm. like i started that back in 2018 and um into 2019 and then COVID came my plan my plan was to, at some point like to do like this have these these um these meets where it's not professional but you can come and you can just enter i always plan just to complete one i don't need to win just want to yeah. actually run in a final but yeah i love track and field i just love the discipline that comes with it because remember it's just you the track and yourself and board ain't no partner you have men who win ring and thing and never do nothing you know because they're yeah, just that's really true that's true yeah <laughs> they're just around in a club <laughs> yeah, you yeah. play in <laughs> you bragging and boasting yeah i have to try about to ring exactly you didn't even when play, play. Exactly. man can't remember when you play so yeah. that's the thing so that's why i respect track and field because yeah. it's self-discipline you know? and when you watch like like you see this documentary and you see all these 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 past athletes like the jamaicans and even the american ones the ones the non-drug american ones the ones yeah, the yeah. Non-drug. <laughs> you have a sense of re- respect for what they do now so yeah. that's why i like track and field today eh? <laughs> nice now you have three releases for us good talk lights and tonight let's start mm-hmm. with good talk our good talk was a, it's a unique story i was on my way to tampa mm-hmm. and the producer he's actually scotch bonus is actually grammy award they are grammy award producers um they, they're from Cayman Islands originally. He sent me the rhythm and he's like, yo, bro, um, we do, I'm doing an EP and I would like it to be on the EP. 
and I was on my way in Uber, just sat in Uber. So when I was listening to the rhythm on the phone, and I said, okay, I will call it back on. On the way to the airport, I sent him a voice note mm-hmm. with me humming the song. I said, bro, this, I don't know, this, this is what I'm hearing. I was going, this is for my ladies tonight. And he was like, bro, I really like that. So in my mind, I was like, all right, cool. And I was thinking it's like one of those, because sometimes if somebody don't know they say, they say, yeah, that have a vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I you off. <laughs> I know how that is go because we do it all the time. Men will send music for the play. Yeah, you got to play the same. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It have my energy. Yeah, yeah. That's it. It's my energy. It's my energy. It's my energy. energy. Yeah. That'll be politically correct. So I know the game as well. So yeah, I was yeah. like, all right, cool. And I said, well, here. So what you do? I said, well, listen, I have no access to the studio until I get back to New York. Yeah. I'm going to Tampa for the weekend because my boys, um, international Stephen and David, were doing this Tampa weekend. They were trying this Tampa bubble with Scorch. So... I was booked for the whole weekend. So I said, I'll go down. And after that, when I reached New York, I'll try him. Well, I'm coming from Cayman. I will fly into Miami and drive to Tampa. So hear me, what? I said, yeah. He said, you have any free days on the weekend? I said, well, I'm going. It was, this was the Tuesday. So I said, the welcome is the Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. I say, during the day on Sunday, have some downtime. Hear him, all right, I'll come in. But I thought I was just speed talk. So I was like, cool, no worries. When I actually was in Tampa, he called and he said, yeah, I was coming and my sister lived in Tampa. So I actually went, I was at my sister chilling out and homeboy came to my sister's house, flew, to, flew in, drive from Miami to Tampa. That's a, a cool three and a half hours. And we recorded this song in my sister's kitchen. I posted pick up to today on my, st- on, my, on my stories. Yeah, he came and I was, and that's what you hear is exactly what I wrote on spot on that day. Because I just wanted that vibe and I just wanted to feel the rhythm is so nice because he uses old cornet in it and it's so groovy and nice little bongs that I love the cornet. So I just sang something I felt, you know, it was just that's what came and I had this is for Mali. That's the only thing I remember the hook. But the rest of the words I just sang it on the spot there. And that's how that song came about. Okay. And tonight, I know you wrote that on your way to Miami Carnival. No, that 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 that, 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 that idea is a white lie. That's not true. It's not what? <laughs> I know you put out well, but I saw no on the internet that, that okay. That one is a white line. <laughs> okay, oh, no, right, it's, right. it's, it's kind of, but it wasn't originally, it wasn't whole written by me, but it was done on the way. Oh, okay, okay. What happened with tonight was, I went to, that's when I first met Spider, I went to the studio to write, to help Ding Dong write a song mm-hmm. on the press back rhythm. Mm-hmm. That's the rhythm that um, lights is on. Yeah. Right? And nylon adamo had a song college boy had a song and second star had a song and it was supposed to be ding dong was the fourth song on the rhythm oh, right nice. so i went to the studio to help ding dong write that song and at the somehow studio, get caught up <laughs> right and at the studio they vibing so they reached the part so i helped ding dong write the bridge and him and spider working all this time i mass up so spider didn't know who i was yeah. i was just in the studio that's vibing yeah, yeah. and about an hour and a half into the session they stopped the music and I was singing up half a thing. And Spider said, Hold up, yo, this dude voice song real familiar. So I pulled up my mask now. Yeah, wait, Jack, you, is you here all the time and then say nothing? I said, No disrespect, I didn't want to intrude in the session. Yeah, I said, I came yeah. with Ding Dong, it's not like if I was invited to the session. Yeah, no, you crazy. So with that, now they're working and while they're working, I, I keep hearing this hook in my head. So I start singing it, singing it. So Spider stuff and it's like, Bro, that real bad. So he's gonna use that part to give to Dong. But then we figured out something else to Ding Dong. Yeah. And he said, Well, Yo, just jot this down. Let's just knock it down. So I end up voicing it down yeah. for Spider. So we, so I wouldn't forget it. Yeah, yeah. So I like about a minute and a half of the song for Spider. So I wouldn't forget it. And in that moment, when I left there, to I was I had to go back to finish the demo for Spider. When I got back there, Spider played the Tonight record. Yeah. He was like, Yo, bro, I had this idea. And I think your voice was sung real nice with, and he start with the, with the Tonight song. And he's like. I say, whoa, this Thai boy. But some of the pronunciations in tonight was weird because he's Bajan heritage. He's an American, but they are Bajan heritage. So yeah. a lot of his pronunciation is little off now. Yeah, yeah. But the pronunciation is what makes you flow. Yeah, yeah. Some songs, you just can't, it's like, there's a, it's always me comparison with this big Grenadian song. I run in long in the man, I do get in left. Big turn up in the I do get in left. If you can't, you have to say it that way for it to bounce and yeah. Change the lyric, it will fall off. Yeah. So that's what happened. So we get caught up in doing tonight. Yeah, because the song is fire. I really like it. And finish tonight. Yeah. So, oh, you finished. So, <laughs> so we finish, and then I was going, Miami. So I was like, and he was like, Yo, I'll play it all before. So he rushed and mix and master. Mm-hmm. 
Miami weekend. Yeah. But that's why I have the lyric when I when I performed in Miami. I said, listen, guys, I really this is her first song. Band never released it. It radio stations didn't even get it properly yet. This is brand new. Yeah. So I put it out. And ironically, last week now, in the and in, in the dregs of Miami here, when everybody finishing, I see lights came out. I was like, what's going on here, bro? The energy just hit me. I said, but I ain't finished here. I'm with good Jesso. Good Jesso. You ain't get your input. He just put so, out Jesso. So, so, so lights, lights ended up um, out as well. So lights yeah. was for me. That, that that one I did on spot. Mm-hmm. Um, tonight was really Spider. 85% of tonight is Spider. Spider had the whole belly of the song. I, I changed a few words, added a few things to feel to feel more me. Mm-hmm. But Spider is, is really the engineer of tonight. Nice. Yeah. All right, guys, stay tuned to listen to three of his latest singles Good Talk, Lights, and Tonight. Let's party tonight, non-stop party. 
hold me right here, hold me right here. You know, I can walk you tonight. We drinking tonight, yeah. Are we jamming tonight, yeah? Are we whining tonight, yeah? I can choke you tonight. We jamming all night till I'm on it. We partying all night long. We drinking all night till I'm on it. Make sure you come with some drinks, huh? That's the stuff what I tell you. Are we waiting? As he always say, great is the art for. Get the night. We gonna jam down, jam down. Jam down. Jam down, jam down. Jam down. We gonna wind down, wind down. Right down. Um, wind down, wind down. Hold me right here, sir. We gonna get down, get down, get down. Stick and stay with us. We gonna force one shot, shot. Come and carry on. Let's party tonight. Non-stop walking up. All night walking up. All night joking up. Thank you so much for being on the show. Can I hear you? You hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. Yeah, Thank thanks you for, a lot for having me. Oh, great. Great is the art form. And it will be great. Great, 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 great <laughs> <is the> art <laughs> And it will prevail. <laughs> and it always prevails. All right. <laughs> All right. Much Blessings. love. Thank you. Blessings. Bye. Right, thanks a lot. All right. Well, don't worry. The professionals are here. Healthy Pets Exclusive Boutique and Farm Animal Supplies, located at Panam Building, Crumb Point, is ready to serve you. Check us out for a variety of gorgeous accessories, fashionista outfits, grooming essentials, toys, potty training supplies, medication, and much more for your furry friends. Great prices on feeds and chows. It's a